Mia Holloway was absolutely amazing. She was warm hearted. She's very gifted. I mean, she showed me so much love and I mean, she dropped so much wisdom on the show today. So make sure you guys subscribe to Kat Harvey SNL on YouTube and definitely stay tuned for her interview. What's up y'all, it's Mia Holloway and I watch my girl Kat Harvey, success, nothing less. What's up world, I'm Kat Harvey, CEO of Cage SNL. Today I'm so, so hyped to have one of the stars and one of my new favorites. Uh, with us today. She is a young boss making mogul moves out here. Uh, I have so much love and respect for her. You guys, she is one of the stars in the Broadway musical, The Lion King. She is playing the adult Nyla, you know, the cute little uh, cub that we all love and Simba and Mufasa and the whole the whole nine, right? Um, <laughs> she's beautiful. She's amazing. I'm a talented actress and singer. I see nothing but great things for her, which is why I definitely had to have her on the show today. So without further ado, please welcome Miss Nia Holloway. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for the introduction. Wow. <laughs> hey, so yeah, t can you tell people, you know, a little bit about yourself? Yes. So um, I'm from originally from Harvey, Illinois. Uh, when I was about eight years old, me and my family took that trek on down to the south to Georgia. And I was, you know, mostly raised in Georgia, um, from the north, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been doing, you know, entertaining all my life. Uh, when I was about 11 years old, I decided, like, I told my parents, like, I really want to do this. Like, I want to be an entertainer. And ever since then, it's been history, you know just auditions and taking dance class and vocal lessons and acting classes and always staying involved in school, all that I can. And um, I did some local theater in Atlanta. I also had the opportunity to be on a show called Majors and Minors when I was 15. Um, and that was um, executive produced by Brandy. So I got to work with her along with um, 12 other celebrities. And uh, me and 12 other kids, we got the opportunity to work with these celebrities and write records. And it was just an amazing experience. And um, Along with that, I've you know done the Phillips Arena and now the Lion King, and I've been all over the country and all over North America, really. Um, I've been on tour for three and a half years now. Uh, it'll be four years in July. So, you know, building that resume, you know. Stay working, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what situation, you know, out of all your success so far, what situation do you feel like uh, tested your patience the most? Hmm. Uh, I would definitely have to say probably The Lion King. Um, it's definitely some of the hardest work I've ever done. Um, we do eight shows a week. Um, we tour all year long. We move a city. We move to different cities every four weeks. So um, I don't. I get two weeks vacation a year. So I'm, I'm constantly, constantly working. It's definitely um, tested uh, my patience with myself, um, with my work that I've done and just getting better. It's um, sometimes it's difficult because I, I don't get a lot of me time. I'm just, I'm, I'm always going. Um, but yeah, I think the Lion King for sure. It's, it's a beast. It is a beast and it's definitely um, made me a soldier. Okay. So why do you think, um, why do you think they chose you, you know, out of the thousands and millions of young, beautiful women too, why do you think they chose you? Um, I think they chose me. Um, I would have to say that I think I display some of the character characteristics Nala has. Um, Nala is a young, fierce warrior, and I, I like to think of myself as a young, fierce warrior. You know, um, when I did my audition, I wasn't when I did my first audition, I wasn't really sure about myself. And then, you know, just with the energy and I was getting from, you know, everybody around me in the universe, I just really felt like it was mine. So I think in my audition process, I, I held this um, confidence, like. Um, I just I just tried to own a room, so I think that's um that that's something that was that got me chosen. I feel like it was just my time, you know. A lot of things, it's a lot of talented people. Um, you go on auditions, it's it's always talented people around. Always, it'll always be somebody who sings better than you, who's you know who's a little bit prettier than you. But I feel like it's when it's your time, it's yours. Nobody can take that away from you. Girl, you stay ready. I ain't even give you the daggone questions. <laughs> So, you know, what are some of the daily habits you felt like um, that you had to apply, I guess, for you to go to the next level in your life and career? Uh, daily habits, for sure, was um, staying in shape. Um, I played, um, I'm, I started Lion King when I was 17, so I'm the youngest woman to play the role. I started, um, my, I got cast in my junior year of high school. So I played basketball and I was really, I'm, I'm really athletic, so definitely staying in shape, that was a daily thing I did. Um, it didn't really matter how long 
or how short of a time I got, I was always doing something to work on my craft. Um, whether it was like learning a song or like listening to somebody and copying riffs or something like that, or or like I said, staying in dance classes, staying in acting lessons. Um, in school, I was in choir. Um, I was in local theater in Atlanta. I think um, daily habits like that, you have to, whatever, if you decide you want to do something, whether it has to be singing, dancing, I don't care what it is, you want to be a doctor, you got to do something every single day that contributes to you getting where you want to be, um, no matter how little or small. So I think that's that's the biggest daily habit. Every single day, no matter how big or how small, do something to contribute to your crab. Okay. So, you know, I see your cute little uh, sweatshirt. What's your purpose? And that gets into my next question. So, you know, at the end of the day, what's the ultimate um, vision that you have for yourself? Um, the ultimate vision, that, that's an interesting question. My, my ultimate vision used to be, like, um, be a megastar, you know, be, I, be iconic. And I think, you know, when I, as I got older and now definitely – traveling the world and not the, well, kind of traveling the, the country and meeting different people and um, seeing how my career has gone, has been successful, but it wasn't necessarily how I saw it would be successful. Um, my purpose has changed to literally just be able, um, sorry, uh, just be able to um, be happy and, um, and be able to share my gift with whoever's going to listen, you know, um, being famous is not a, a goal to me anymore. It really used to be like, you know, if I wasn't famous, I wasn't successful. And um, I, I really don't care about that anymore. As long as I'm happy and I get to share my craft because I feel like it's a gift, you know, the gift that I have inside of me, it could have been given to anybody. Uh, so as long as I can share my gift and, and, and experience the world on, on a big magnitude or, or a small one and, uh, and make some money, then I'm happy. <laughs> The money is a must. <laughs> um, so, you know, as a young black woman, you know, being in the industry now, and I'm sure you see a lot of good and bad things um, in the industry. So do you feel like you have to work 10 times as harder knowing that people are putting you in the young category, the woman category, and the black category? Do you feel like you have to work 10 times harder at that? Yeah, um, and yeah, yeah, for sure. In a sense, I feel like there's a learning, cur there's a curve anyway. Um, but I do feel like, um, ah, yeah, I think I, I do have to work a little bit harder. But I mean, I like a little edge, you know. Um, but you know, sometimes that's how it goes, especially right now when you have to, you know, fight for a role. And sometimes you might be fighting for a role because of, you know your complexion or something like that. But um, I do feel like it's a it's a trouble, but when I get to see people like um, what, what, in movies like Hidden Figures and Fences and and all these successful shows with you know black um, entertainers and and not just black entertainers you know colored entertainers period um, it's inspiring and I feel like the edge that that curb that we have to work at sometimes um, is getting cut down a little bit because you know it's you can't deny you can't deny talent can't deny greatness so eventually they, you know it, it goes away <laughs> so you know what advice can you give to people that want to be in your shoes you know who gone to a certain I guess I know you heard of Duke Ellington right School of the Arts in DC Dave Chappelle went there a lot of famous actors went to the Duke Ellington school it's a really notable school for the arts kind of like the Julie Bartz for ballet it's kind of like that for acting in DC it's called Duke Allen. Look, Google it. <laughs> that, that's Dave Chappelle's um, high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so getting back to the advice. So do you do you have any advice for, for young people or people generally who want to become um, known in the musical and acting industry, but they may not have an agent or... How, how did you funnel your way as far as getting those casting calls and being able to decipher, okay, I'm going to do this, so I'm going to pass on that? Um, well, right now, I don't, I, my parents, um, my parents been managing me my entire career, um, and I don't, I don't have an agent at the moment. Um, it was just a matter of getting on, being able to have access to websites like Backstage and, um, um, actors act access those are websites where you can get on but honestly if you literally google you can look up agencies and literally if you can go somewhere and get somebody to take a headshot of you you can 
send it to whomever you want to. There's no restrictions anymore. Um, you know, to be honest with you, you don't need an agent per se when you're starting off. You know, you can get to whomever you want to. And when there's an audition, you can literally Google auditions in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? And something will come up and you can subscribe to certain websites that'll let you know, like, hey, you fit this description, go to this audition. I think too, it's just a matter of you gotta be hungry enough. You know, when you're not when you're not hungry enough, you'll find any excuse for something not to happen. But when you're hungry enough, when you wanna survive, when you wanna when you want what you want as much as you want to survive, you find ways to make it happen. And, and I, that's what me and my um, me and my team did, which consists of me and my parents. You know, um, you know, when we started off, we didn't have that many connects, but we created those connects. And I didn't that many people didn't know who I was, but I went to a thousand auditions, and and, and that's what people understand, have to understand too. Sometimes going to an audition isn't about getting it. Going to an audition is sometimes getting the experience, knowing what to do in an audition, what not to do in an audition. And you know, you're not gonna get everything. 95% of an actor's career, of a singer's career, of a dancer's career is gonna be a no. 95%. So you get that, that means the numbers, you gotta add a lot of auditions for your numbers to be right. So you just gotta be hungry. That's what I would give, that's the advice I would give to people. Believe in yourself, I don't care who's doubting you. If, if it is your parents, on you you got to be hungry enough and believe in yourself and go get whatever you want because it's too many opportunities out here to not have what you want okay so how um how did you get out your own way that's a good one um i think and i'm still working on that um but i think the best way i got out of my own way is that um I used to, when I was younger, I used to be like, oh, look what that person got, why I didn't get that role. Or look look at that audition that person got, I didn't get that. And I think the best thing I did for myself was um, stop worrying about other people. <laughs> That's the best thing I could have did um, for myself. Because when you focus on other people, for one, you don't have enough energy to give to yourself. And what they do has nothing to do with what you're doing. You know, all of our journeys are different, our stories are different, so like, you know, even somebody watching this and they want to be an actress, you can't compare your story to me because, like, my page 10 is not going to be your page one. You know, we, we're all on different stages. And it, we all can have exactly what we want. And, and, and we just get out your own way and worry about yourself. That's what I would say. Worry about yourself. Don't be happy for people. And that's the biggest thing. Start to be happy for people. It, even if you want to have that urge to you know, be a little, that little green monster, get on your shoulder a little bit, be happy for people. And I promise you, you'll get to what's coming to you. You keep putting the right energy out to the universe. Okay. One of the things that, you know, aside from your personality and, and the go getting attitude, um, about you getting your education, why did you feel like that was important, you know, while you're touring and so forth to get your diploma um, and still have a successful career? And how did you get everybody to buy into that um that must for you yeah for sure um it was just because i didn't want to um i didn't want to just like i was the youngest woman but i didn't want somebody to say she's good to be that young i wanted to just be good and i happened to be that young you know i didn't want my story to go by my journey to go by and and, and it wasn't even for other people, it was for me. I didn't want it to go by and say like, oh, maybe it was easy because you took this different route, or easier route. Like, I'm not gonna take the easier route. I told myself I wanted to graduate the way everybody else graduates. I wanted to walk across the stage with my friends I had been going to school with since we were, you know, 12 and 13 years old. So that was another thing for me. And um, I just wanted to finish how I started. And I feel like, you know, I was like, it's, it'll be a little bit hard, but I mean, it's not impossible. So, and then Disney was all on board. They were like, whatever you need. They also made sure I could go home for prom. Um, I went home for graduation. I went home for all the fun stuff. And then I did school online on the road. <laughs> but um, yeah, they were all on board. They made sure I had everything I needed. They, they provided a tutor for every city I went to. Um, and I did school for like four hours a day along with like my homework and stuff I did. So I was still in school like eight hours a day like everybody else. Um, but they were, they made it a lot smoother too. And then my pops came out on the road with me my first year. So really all I had to do was do my homework and do the show. And he handled everything else. So that helped me out a lot. If you could work with anybody specifically, um, who would it be and why and what's and what role um, would you play? 
um, you want acting wise or music wise? Whichever you want. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Acting wise, who do I want to work with? Hmm. I think um, probably either Viola Davis or Taraji P. Henson. Not because they like super popular right now, but they've always been inspirations of mine. And they're so powerful. And I love that every time somebody asks, asks them about, you know, the struggles of being, a, you know, a black entertainer, it's always, um, they always steer it back to uplifting each other and supporting each other. And so I feel like um, I would be honored to work with those two. Um, yeah. And the dream role. Um, I, I think like um, theater wise, I'm currently right now with what, what's out. I'm living in my dream role for theater. Um, but I think television wise or movie wise, I really like I'm super like athletic. I've always wanted to play a super villain and I want to do my own stunts. So um, I'm legit gonna work on like my karate and stuff, and I like want to be doing my own stunts. And I hope like one day you guys will see me in a movie, and I'm gonna be a villain. Like I don't want to be a superhero. I want to be a villain. <laughs> you want to kick people's butts. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, I want to ask you one more last question, and then and then want to wrap up. Um, what? Well, actually, it's two. I want you to talk about the importance of integrity. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as while you're doing business and then also, you know, your name being out there, how important that is. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, integrity, oh my gosh. That, well, I can't say enough how huge that is. Um, like you want to in in business wise um personal relationships you build with anybody you want to be able to walk away from the relationship and not necessarily someone not have anything bad to say about you but i never i no one can ever leave um a relationship with me business wise and say she was unprofessional and it's so important that you hold that, that your professional integrity and the morals you're raised with. Um, you know, that can never be for sale. That can never be up for negotiation, anything like that. Um, it's important. When I say integrity, it's like you do when nobody's looking, you know, and, and you, get to, you get to the places, the goal, your goals you reach, you get to those goals by um, making sure your integrity is in line. Like, are you working when you think nobody else is watching? Are you working even though you're not going to get recognition for it? Like, are you working? Nobody's going to give you a trophy. Because, like, when you see people win trophies, when you see people win championships and they get Oscars and Tonys and Grammys, it's not the work that people saw that got them there. It's the everything they did. Nobody saw that got them to that point. And that's what integrity is. It's everything you're willing to do when nobody's watching you. And if that's check nine times out of ten you're not going to reach where you need to be because um when your integrity is in, in line that means the reasons you want to do things in, are in line like your family and it can't be for money like and you know everybody that i look up to um as entertainers they always say that um they didn't think about the money they thought about the art and they thought about the creativity and they thought about um the work they were giving people emotionally they never when you chase those things the money follows so your reasons have to be right and i like integrity is top of the line when it comes to handling yourself as a um as a professional and as a entertainer that in line or you'll lose yourself okay well thank you so much for your time today Absolutely. we got Thanks. up and going <laughs> <laughs> I truly appreciate it. I mean, I see nothing but great things. I mean, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and when you get your villain role, send me my ticket. Yes. <laughs> um, you guys check out Miss Nia Holloway. She's definitely taking over, and I see nothing but great things for her. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nia, for coming on the show today. It meant a whole lot to me. And definitely hit me up as soon as you get that villain role, girl. Make sure you guys follow Nia at Nia Holloway. And definitely stay tuned for her upcoming projects and events.